On a doomed Earth where all plant life is infected with a deadly virus, ecosystems collapse and there is no hope for the survival of humanity. Dr. Steve Ross has found a sphere almost as old as the Earth itself. Upon studying it, he learns it can create life from molecules. He duplicates the now defunct sphere and assembles a team of scientists to take it to a new planet far away in hopes of creating a new place for all humans to live. However, a hitchhiking mysterious entity is on their ship planning to sabotage their mission. Can they beat this monster and start a new planet? Or will humanity perish on Earth from the virus and have no new vacation home to find refuge? Let's find out. A virus has attacked all the plants on Earth and ravaged all ecosystems. The defoliation has decreased levels of oxygen, increased carbon dioxide, people and animals die when the plants are eaten, and pretty much humanity and Earth are doomed. But have no fear, for Dr. Steve Ross is here with a plan to save humanity. He's in charge of the Sphere Project. A relic ball planted on Earth four billion years ago was found, and it is a machine that can create life. Steve and his team have duplicated the Sphere and plan to take it to the solar system, TESS, several hundred light years away. They found a way to jump through wormholes and bend the space-time continuum to travel anywhere in the galaxy. An unmanned probe has already visited Tess and reported back that the planet is similar to Earth. And a team of six men and one woman will spend four years terraforming the planet so Earth's population can move there. Is this going to be like Noah's Ark? Can some animals come too? Just leave the mosquitoes behind. They are hoping to create Earth 2.0. Steve will captain the mission, but must leave behind his girlfriend, Amy, who just announced she is having their baby to do so. Ah, yes, the pregnant wife or girlfriend has been thrown in to spice things up just a bit. She thinks she's close to discovering a vaccine for the virus and begs him to stay. He's very sad about that, but it's his life's dream, and he must save the human race. Plus, they can be together again on the new planet. Amy sadly watches as a ship leaves on its journey. Some nefarious entity has hitched a ride in the sphere and sneaks out once the crew is ready to pass through the wormhole. So far, all has gone according to plan as they squeeze their way through this dimension bend arriving hundreds of light years away in mere minutes. But this entity slithers out, its tentacle reaching the navigation system causing a critical error. They soon awaken to discover they've been propelled far off course into an uncharted part of the universe. I think they're not in Kansas anymore. Steve yells at Peter, who is in charge of entering the coordinates. He blames him for the mishap and confines him to quarters. Now, lost in space, Steve regrets leaving his girlfriend and recalls witnessing an aberration near the sphere back on Earth, but never told anyone. Humiliated, Peter decides to check the engines, so he shuts off surveillance cameras but videos himself to show others he did nothing wrong. As he opens the airlock, the entity sabotages his attempts and attacks him. The warning system identifies something approaching the ship from deep space, and the crew sees Peter, all frozen, floating outside. They all assume he eliminated himself due to the guilt from his mistake. Steve looks into the conditions on this new planet and sees it's even better than Tess. However, like early Earth, there's no free oxygen. But when life starts forming there, there will be. Steve orders the crew to take a shuttlecraft down to plant the sphere there. There is some resistance to this idea, but Steve unlocks the shuttle and the crew goes to investigate, leaving one man, Richard, to monitor from the mothership. As they fly the ship down, a sudden storm disrupts their course and they crash land near a cave. They had to release their fuel and now do not have enough to get back to the mothership. 
the land crew carries the sphere deep into the cave to let it begin releasing its life-forming molecules. Steve thinks those from Earth will be able to track them and will soon send other ships to help with the project. Meanwhile, Richard is exploring the ship and finds Peter's video. We see slime leaking from the place where the sphere once stood. They program the orb and it's working. A new biosphere is quickly forming. Richard sends the land crew the video of Peter's engine check. As he looks inside, the entity attacks him with its tentacles. And now they know something evil has hitched a ride intending to ruin their mission. Richard informs them that he's tracked the entity and it's circling their shuttlecraft. Ryan believes the sphere has a mind of its own and thinks Steve knew this anomaly all along. He stages a mutiny and the others follow his orders. I guess because he's bigger than Steve and Steve only cares about saving humanity with this sphere thing. Steve convinces his old pal David to sneak to the cave with him to adjust the settings because this big round metal ball isn't behaving as expected. Believing the entity to be far away, they go. Inside the cave, wormy-like creatures are already proliferating around the sphere. It's creating life forms much faster than expected. David wants to just leave and start shooting at the sphere, but Steve fights back. The speedy entity has returned and chases them back to the shuttle. They attempt to run from it. They just barely make it, trapping the creature outside. Ryan is angry the two left the lander. He punches Steve out when he behaves insubordinately. Suddenly, the module is breached for the creature ate through the metal to get inside. At the sound of the alarm, a frightened Leona runs around in her underwear and encounters slime leaking everywhere. Okay, how many of you are going to rewind that scene a couple of times? She and Mike hide in the laboratory, but the creature finds them. So Leona runs while Mike tries to fight it. He loses. Since it's all his fault, Steve volunteers to go to the fuse box and get the cameras running again. The others agree. They have to find this thing if there's any hope of escape. He gets the system restarted and they see the entity is coming after Steve. He's saved and now all will work together to lure it outside. But it's smarter than they anticipated and it can control the electronics. Steve agrees to be the bait to draw it away. David gets attacked but Steve is successful. However, Leona dies trying to cover him when he ran to safety. The entity has morphed into a dragon-like monster with tentacles, and they still don't know what it wants. It lies in wait outside. David has been bitten by it, so they start studying its tentacles, trying to understand its physiology. They learn the creature is made of the same elements as the sphere. Hmm, strange. Steve discovers the tentacle is acting like a transponder, communicating with the sphere there and its duplicate on Earth. Ryan has had it with Steve and locks him in the infirmary with the sickly David and works on getting the shuttle off the ground. David is angry with Steve too, saying he doesn't care about other people's lives. Steve examines David's blood and learns he has the antibodies now for the virus. The saliva from the entity made David's blood the savior of humanity. If he could only send Amy the formula. The cure lies in the material of the sphere. And the bracelet he made for her contains those molecules. But she threw it away in frustration when he wouldn't stay with her. Typical. Steve hypothesizes that the wormhole may have altered. So he has Richard speed up the star map four billion years, and they learn they are on early Earth before life appeared. The sphere here and the one on Earth is the same, only at different times. He hopes Amy will miss him and recover her love bracelet, and no. Ryan, however, plans to blow up the sphere. Richard tells Steve, who breaks free to find him so he can be told everything and won't destroy a human's chance. A deranged and pockmarked David starts shooting and kills Ryan. 
David has become a monster. His goal is to ensure humanity does not survive and his kind will conquer this planet and the Earth. Steve lures the monster into the hatch while deformed David continues to shoot. The monster follows, as does Trigger Happy David. The monster kills David. Hey, I thought they were a team. And Steve makes his escape with only seconds to spare. Just as the ship blows up with the monster entity inside. Richard calls from the main craft and asks Steve if they want him to pick them up after their cave visit. The storm outside is raging, so he tells him to wait till it passes. Inside the cave, the space-time barrier is penetrated. Amy has found the bracelet and runs to the sphere. Steve and Amy are able to speak with each other across dimensions. He tells her how to make the vaccine. Love overwhelms them and he takes off his mask to kiss her. Without any oxygen left on the stormy doomed planet, Steve soon dies, knowing that he saved the Earth and his child's future. The vaccine works. The plants are back to normal. Amy probably made mega bucks and went on Oprah. And the baby? Well, the baby knows his father saved the world. What are your thoughts on this one? Myself, I always like a good sci-fi tale. But let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to get notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.